thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here this morning. I just want to make one small correction to the uh, brief bio that was given earlier. Uh, some uh, as references being a Buddhist monk. I was a Buddhist monk for five years. By my appearance, you can probably say, why is he not wearing robes? And he has way too much hair for a monk. Uh, but I was a monk, a Tibetan Buddhist monk for five years. And, uh, and uh, as was mentioned in my bio and others have spoken as well, I think we all come from experience of walking uh, within different multi-faith environments, not only in Canada, but different parts of the world. And I'm honored to be here this morning to share a little bit of my views on multiculturalism in Canada. And uh, it's a shame I only have a few minutes to speak, but the main piece I wanted to really communicate this morning is that, uh, and I've already heard it echoed a little bit uh, from Don Meredith this morning as well, around multiculturalism. And we know that basically for multiculturalism to work, at a minimum, we require a respect, uh, or sorry, a tolerance of the other. And ideally, it would be required for us to have that kind of love, acceptance, and respect of the other. In order for us to do that, we need to really look closely, and I think we can see this very much in, our, in, our, in the Canadian government, that multiculturalism is very closely connected and how effective it is with our immigration policies and how well we treat newcomers to our country. And these values of respect and love and acceptance need to be embodied in these immigration policies. And what that can really look like from day to day is hospitality. And that's the one piece that a lot of our religious traditions and cultural traditions kind of really embody is that spirit of hospitality, of being able to be welcoming and accepting of the other. And uh, as was mentioned in the question that was posed, that there's often a threat out there that's seen in media and people talk about of this sort of threat of our traditional way of life. And I think that can be a very big barrier for us to be hospitable. I've been in many homes, uh, many homes that are from different, different religious traditions, and been fortunate enough to sort of experience that uh, sense of hospitality and interest in, in myself or myself and others to learn more and to understand their way of thinking and their beliefs and their way of life. And I think one of the biggest challenges though that we often miss is that the, the whole piece around this crisis or concern around multiculturalism in Canada is not simply connected just with people's threat of a traditional way of life. But we often also miss the point that there's a basic sort of threat that people feel around economic insecurities. I think we live in a day and age that we cannot separate the economic reality that we live in internationally and how that impacts us in Canada, but even more so in Toronto, that we have to understand that it's much more difficult to be hospitable of the other. When I feel threatened that I'm losing, I may lose my job to the other, and it's often other in the media, that people are coming from other countries and we're, we're, when we have very strict um, immigration policy that, that limits the amount of people coming to our country from fear of losing our jobs. And so there's also a very close relationship. I think it would be a great study to look at uh, Canadian history and to look at economic security in our country and the experience of tolerance which will probably be heightened. I think when we feel less fear of the other uh, for certain reasons, and I'm really kind of focusing on the economic piece right now, there are probably other pieces as well. But I think we need to really look closely at how that kind of fear of poverty, fear of losing our jobs, and how does that um, get communicated through corporations, through companies, and through our society to not feel threatened by the other. I think me does a, a, does a, a injustice by often promoting this sense around losing our jobs to newcomers. And that negatively impacts our multiculturalism, our spirit of multiculturalism in, in the country. Um, you know, we even have to look quite basically at Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? People want to have the basic needs of their lives met. And it's hard for us to embody and live out those, those experiences of self-actualization or psycho-spiritual experiences of development, which really is accepting the other and feeling less threatened. We cannot do that if our basic needs are not being met. And if we're continually being bombarded with media and other information that's making us feel threatened and fearful, these basic needs at any point can be taken away. And often the reason it's put out there is because of the other, the other who's coming. Um, I, was, I was born here in Canada in the early 70s. My parents were new, new newcomers, new immigrants in the late 60s. They came from uh, Yugoslavia back then, and, uh, or actually Croatia within, within Yugoslavia. And it was very different for them, you know, coming here in the, the early seven, late 60s, early 70s, there was quite a booming economy. Uh, my father spoke uh, often about experience of discrimination. Uh, we didn't come from a religious tradition different than perhaps the traditional uh, religion of the country. We grew up Catholic. Uh, but of course, there was a lot of different kinds of cultural discriminations that happened, uh, you know, amongst Eastern Europeans versus Western Europeans and so on. 
Uh, but I think what we find is that there were a lot of jobs that were taken up at that time uh, by newcomers uh, of labor. There was a booming economy of manufacturing jobs in the late 60s and early 70s, and there was less of a threat. People didn't feel threatened as much in terms of the kinds of jobs that might be lost. In today's day and age, we have a lot of newcomers who are coming that have a lot of technical professional skills that uh, many people can feel threatened. And I think that we have to look at that kind of relationship uh, between multiculturalism and the economic security of our country. Um, the other pieces that kind of affect it as well, I mean, you have to watch the, the news for the last couple of weeks. We see the European uh, Union, the European economy also going through significant changes, uh, Greece primarily. And we see that, we're, so we're watching all this information, right? We're watching this, and this is impacting our ability to understand the other and the fear for our own economic security. But where I'll just kind of leave it here is that I think that what we're encourage that as well is to explore more of a sense around self-interest rather than the common interest. And I think that when we talk about multiculturalism, we need to be very conscious that we're looking at a value that we embody in day-to-day day, 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 day day life that focuses on the common interest as opposed to the self-interest. The, uh, the best way for us to experience this feeling is to make sure that, uh, of course, our families need to make us feel protected, uh, need to make us feel safe, our religious communities naturally are a place of sanctuary for us when we feel threatened. Uh, our companies need to embody that kind of confidence that there are jobs and opportunities. But I think most importantly, we need to make sure that we have uh, a government, actually all three levels of government, are really communicating to us that we are protected and that they're there to protect us. And I think that when we look at a government that, uh, different levels of government that focus on decreased social spending, uh, privatization of services, uh, selling off of national mandates uh, for international trade agencies, and just unresponsive government services, um, we tend to feel threatened. And, and there's a real call for governments to play that protective role to help us encourage to feel safe and secure so that we will not fear the other. And from there, we will have a stronger multicultural society.